Jesus no, 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 came no. to... No, no, I'm talking about your point of view, what okay, you believe, because you have to defend it. Okay, my point of view is that, there. Yeah, Please. In terms of Christianity, I get what you're saying, because it is, if you look at it, there is loopholes, isn't it? So uh, what you're saying is absolutely right to a point, but to a point, Jesus came to... It was a transgression of the law. I don't doubt Jesus Christ came. Yeah. And there was a transgression of the law. Yeah. What law? He came with something new. Because yeah. now we're talking about the law and we're talk I was talking about the message. Yeah. The message is there's one God. Yeah. Moses said he was um, the Ten Commandments. Do you remember what the first commandment is? Thou shalt not kill? No. Um, Thou shalt not have no other God apart from me. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And he says um, that there's one God. Thou shalt not worship, make any images of God. Yeah. So it was monotheism, yes, yes. what Abraham taught, oneness of God. Yes. Yeah? Even Jesus Christ was asked in regards to what's the greatest of all commandments. He said, Hear, o Israel, the Lord our God is one. So Moses is teaching this, Jesus is teaching this, the prophet Muhammad is teaching there's only one God. Where did you get Trinity from? Jesus Christ, sorry, very quickly, Jesus Christ never taught Trinity. The Bible doesn't teach Trinity. Categorically, it never says the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they're co equal, they're the same. Yeah, I can show you plenty of verses. There's something God the Father knew Jesus Christ didn't know. Jesus Christ is hungry. Da -da -da -ra -ra. Does that make sense? I'm thinking to myself, like, where's this Holy Spirit image as well? There was this, all of this bare confusion taking place. So, you're saying, let's go back to the, um, the religion of Abraham. I'm saying, I'm already there, my bro. Join me. <laughs> <laughs> I hear what you're definitely saying because, you, as I said, I've got a, a, a noble man, manager, and he, and he preaches this, and he lives what he preaches. So I've seen certain characters, certain things, and even in terms of prison system, I believe Islamic way of prison is better. Yes, yes. Than that, it sounds mad, but being in a cage for a long time, rather than you can take money or something, I agree with yeah. some, of them, some of those things. I do agree. With. These, these are the laws of Allah. Does that make sense? Who knows the creation yeah. better than the Creator? Yeah. And the creator is saying that, look, we know, like, because me, myself, I've worked in that system and I've realized that you're putting people, criminals together, and they're teaching one another the exactly. wrong things, exactly. giving them contacts. Yeah. You know what I mean, I've never heard of people who've gone in and learned something good. I'm exaggerating, like, they've always learned something bad that outweighs the good that they may have learned. Do you know what I mean? So I'm saying to you, like, if there's so much of Islam you agree with, yeah. yeah and but there's some stuff I disagree with as well, so I don't want to start offending you as well. Offend so me, <laughs> you're blurred out. Yeah, right, you're blurred out, okay, offend okay, me. Go on, okay, what you got for me? Here's some of the things that people yeah. need to understand. Yeah, yeah. Basically, to a lot of people, it's the phony sequel. They say that Christianity and Muslim is the phony sequel. Like the chosen people are this and the rest are the phony sequel. You know what I'm saying? Somebody could say that. One, two. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let me you answer your first one first, yeah? My point is, I'm not even going to respond to that because it's not something you believe. Does that make sense? So I can make that argument with someone who brings it and then I'll demolish it and it'll be fun for me because I'll see um, the loss in his eyes when I destroy what he believes. You don't believe that. Come with something that you feel like, hmm, I'm not sure about this when it comes okay. to Islam. Does that make sense? Okay. I can respond to it. Okay, here's something I think, um, my personal. How can it be the word of God if the guy that wrote the uh, Quran couldn't write and read? Brilliant. I love it. Now, this is one of the signs and one of the miracles of God Almighty. A man in the desert, unlettered man who didn't know how to read or write, yeah, having a scripture revealed to him by God yeah, that has a mastery of the Arabic language. I mean, there's even now, if you look at the research being done by non-Muslim academics, they actually say in regards to how we protect the Arabic language, how the Quranic Arabic is on another level. Yeah? One of the reasons yeah, that Allah chose to reveal to a man who's unlettered, you can't, you can't excuse him of copying. He read it somewhere. He copied it from some scripture. That's number one. Now, if this isn't from God, then how has it been perfectly preserved through an oral tradition of memorization? So now, you know a lot of people who are not as educated as yourself say, oh, it's man-made, yeah? Men make mistakes. I'm saying, yo, 
the Quran was given from God to the angel Gabriel to the Prophet Muhammad who spoke it. The companions around him memorized it word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. Hence, to this day now, we've got over 200 million, 200 million people memorize the Quran word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. And then majority of them are not even born Arabs. Does it make sense? Then, because we're living in this country, I'll take you to the um, university in Birmingham. They have one of the oldest man um, Quranic manuscripts that's been carbon dated by non-Muslims to prove that, yeah, this was in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What more evidence do you want? Your question is my evidence. I'm thanking you for asking the question because that solidifies um, why you should be a Muslim? Are you satisfied? Yeah, to a point. And another. And what another point? No, no. Challenge it. Challenge it. I want you to be completely satisfied. <laughs> okay. So, because say. Because, how, sorry. Say that for the sake of me. Repeat the question. And make sure that I ticked all the boxes. What was uh, your question? How can this be from the word of God if the person who wrote the book uh, is not is an illiterate? Yeah. So how do you know that the person that received the information would then? alter what he said to them okay. and he can't prove that you know? no no yeah. because the fact of the matter is it's not one um, person who's memorized it yeah, yeah? we've got um, multiple accounts of people who have memorized the exact same thing yeah. that's number one number two there's parts of the quran that criticizes the prophet muhammad Does make sense? if it was from anyone apart from god he would have been that oh give me money give me all of your attractive women da 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 ra ra but it doesn't say that does it make sense secondly the people at the time who knew the prophet muhammad they did not criticize him for lying they never knew him as a dishonest man you cannot find a single um, blemish to his character in fact there's narrations where when he got the revelation he went on top of a mountain and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that look, if I was to tell you that there's an army behind this mountain waiting to attack, would you believe me? They said, yes. He said, well, I'm warning, Lucy translates the nearest meaning, I'm coming to warn you of a greater calamity. A, that if you don't obey God, Allah, yeah, then there'll be more destruction. Does it make sense? Save yourself is more of a warning then this army, if there was an army there, it's more important for you to know and worship God. Does that make sense? And then they rejected a few of them, do you know what I mean? But the people around him, his inner circle, accepted it quick. Does that make sense? And that's why I say to people, when you become Muslim, the first ones to embrace Islam will be your inner circles. Because they know your character. Does that make sense? Your wife knows how you are. Your mom knows how you are because you lived with her, X, Y and Z. Does that make sense? It's harder for me to portray the message to strangers because they don't know who I am. Yeah? Like yourself, they may have watched a few videos of me on yeah, YouTube. So you, I mean. I you, you like it, yeah? I like you. My, my, my ego's yeah. getting big now, no, bro. Yeah, yeah, I watch all these philosophers like you. There's a uh, Hyde Park Corner. Yeah. There's Muhammad Ajab and all that. It's yeah, you. mashallah. And, and um, uh, Ali Dawa. I like you. You, you, you honor me, my bro, because yeah. I would say you're, these you're brothers are on yeah. another level. No, I'm just, I'm just like. No, no, not at all, my bro. We always have these debates as well. And I'd love to bring him here to debate you more. Because he 100% he of thousands of percent arguments. But no one's saying a lot of the things you're saying is true. Yeah. You know what I mean? like he wants to argue the whole thing. Like, argue it, bring it, bring it. Yeah. Does that make sense? It doesn't necessarily have to be a Saturday. We exchange numbers. Yeah. We go for coffee, tea, lunch, whatever you want, dinner. And we have that combo, man. Because I enjoy it. And the fact of the matter is, it's not an ego thing. It's not about me having fun. It's about, look, if you don't have the correct belief, you're not going to enter paradise. Damn. If you have the wrong belief, you're going to hellfire. Damn. Does that make sense? Oh, like, that's another thing that gets like, yeah. That's what I meant to say. Like, so, for example, so I'm a, that's exactly what a Christian believes, and that's exactly what a, 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 Jew, a Jew believes. Yeah? yeah. So, and a Muslim believes exactly the same. Now, so therefore, you've lived a righteous life, a Christian's lived a righteous life, a, a, a Jew's lived a righteous life. So that means somebody's wrong. So, that means one person that's wrong, that, that all their people are going to perish. <coughs> That's now, you who defines what's a righteous life? 
Like, for example, they're not, they're not robbing, they're not stealing. Who defines what's a righteous life? Like you care for your neighbour? God, yeah. Yeah? I'm not asking for examples and God defines it. Yeah. Now, how are the mandem living a righteous life when the scripture hasn't been protected? Yeah. When man-made elements have gone into the scripture? Now, going back to your initial question in regards to um, how do we know? So again, more about the character of the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah? Um, we can give you his lineage back to Abraham. Yeah? We know about um, how he lived his life. Does that make sense? My point is, if I put on an act, yeah, the act that I put in front of the camera, yeah, that's the act. What I do behind the cameras, how long can I maintain that act for? Does it make sense? He didn't, he didn't, it wasn't an act because he didn't slip up. Does it make sense? He practiced what he preached. You know, with all due respect, you're mentioning um, this lovely manager you have, yeah? May Allah bless him and uh, strengthen him. I'm saying, if you liked him, you love the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because your manager is imitating him. Go straight to the source. Does it make sense? True. And I'm saying, how do we preserve the source? Yeah, we have um, eyewitness accounts of individuals who interacted with the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, and they can verify his character. We have a system, a science of actually how we verify the verifiers. Did they have good memories? Are they trustworthy? Were they physically there? Um, and so on and so forth. There's five to seven more criteria. You know what I mean? So we have a strict criteria of actually verifying the information about the person. Do you know what I mean? And that person has given us information. So we preserve the Quran. Yeah. Another evidence. Yeah. Because I was going to talk about hadiths. So I'm going to leave that because I want to be concise. If the Quran was from anyone apart from God, because your initial question is. How do we know that the Prophet Muhammad would be like made some mistake or he didn't change or nothing man made? Mistake. I'm saying, like, say I'm, I'm saying it, I'm yeah, saying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah? thank you, you're being very respectful, yeah? Because there's no corruption in the Quran, it's from God. My evidence that the Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God is the fact that the Quran is perfect. The Quran is perfect, God is perfect, so it must have come through a messenger. Now, what does the Quran say? If you're in doubt, bring something like it. Bring a chapter. The smallest chapter in the Quran is three um, ayats. Yeah? It gets translated as verses, but the reality is ayat is a sign. Yeah? Each ayat, each verse will blow your mind. Yeah? How, Please remind me by the end of the conversation, I'm going to gift you a Quran free of charge. Really? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll give you two. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'll count one, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. Would a man them on your t shirt as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No problem, my bro. Um, I got distracted. So, now, the Quran, the three ayats, yeah, is ten, is ten words. The Quran is saying, if you have any doubt in this book, Bring a chapter like it, no one has been able to raise that challenge. You got bare Islam haters, Islamophobic people. Yeah, that's, that's not true, that's, that's bad. But even them with the combined skills, they could not bring something like it. There is an ongoing challenge, it's challenging you. The Quran, nine ayats into it. It says, a book where there's no doubt. The book that has no mistakes in it. In other verses it talks, there's no mistakes in the Quran. Then how can it be from anyone apart from God? How can it not be revealed to a God, a man, a man, a God, a messenger sent by God? I understand, I get that part. Do you feel that I've answered your first question. 
Thank you so much. But next question. No, no, no. I'm not letting you go, my bro. I'm not letting you go. Grab him. Yeah. Uh, there's gonna be a wall of Aki's blocking you, my bro. Yeah. We're gonna conclude this combo. What else you got for me? Uh, and a lot. I basically. Yeah. Don't don't even tie yourself down. Um, yeah. This question, not even the last question, yeah. as many as you want. You okay. might think of okay. one. Okay, listen, another one I've got. Is yeah, Bismillah. How comes. It's like kind of linked to like war. You know what I mean? That's another thing people like. One thing was like, Christians more about forgiveness, but in Islam, it's presented more like war. Like, you know, Give me an example. Like, like, is it the tribal? Not the tribal, that's prayer. Like, like the. Holy, what the, what's that called? Like you're thinking, you're thinking of jihad. Jihad, there yeah. we go. But right. jihad doesn't even mean holy war. No. Yeah, Qatar means like holy war. Do I mean war? Qatar, yeah. But the reality of jihad is to is using the context. I'm going to be fair as well. Is using the context of like there's different levels. So me waking up for fajr is jihad and nafs. Do I mean me me being out here when these Gal them are not dressed appropriately and lowering my gaze how is you jihad enough. Huh? How, how do I do that? By following the Quran and Sunnah. Yeah? Because the Quran says that look, I think they um, don't look. Because it, once it enters your it enters your heart through the eyes. So I will remind myself that I think they, what Allah has is better. Okay, all right, don't recall this bit. How yeah. do you not hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm not gonna can you save that question? Oh, go to... Alright, because it's like can we save it till the end? Because no, I, I don't want to I the doubt. Effect. I the marks, yeah. At the end. Yeah, yeah, I'll ask you. Just ask at the end, and then it's easier to edit out because these brothers are going to struggle to just come to this point and cut it out. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, are you going to remember? It's so right on your phone. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the fact of the matter is, look, when it gives you practical solutions, my bro. Yeah. If you're not, it says the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said to his all young men in the mosque. Yeah. And by the context of the conversation. So we deduce that there's probably talking about Galdem. Yes. Yeah? The Prophet Sallallahu said, look, um, get married. If you can't get married, fast. Practical. So right now, if it's too hard for me, I'll come here and fasting. I'll be fasting. Why? Because we're created in such a way that my physical desires will reduce when I'm thinking about food. When, that, when I'm hungry, I'm not going to be thinking about gallum, I'm going to be thinking about that grilled chicken. Does that make sense? So when you, when you don't think about girls, you yeah. If I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed yeah. with the foods, does that make sense? And that's the, that's the way shown in the, by the prophet. Okay. The example shown. Yeah. But I don't really, we can have this conversation, but I want to keep it more on theology. Is that okay? Yeah. Because yeah? we're going to switch up the conversation and we have a more like a man-to-man -man combo about this year. Um, and another thing is like talking about marriage, yeah, practical, my bro. Whatever is forbidden is bad for you. Whatever is permissible, do it. Whatever is good for you, there's always a halal way of doing it, a permissible way of doing it. Does that make sense? I can fornicate outside of marriage. She might get pregnant. I might get sexually transmitted diseases. Yeah. Um, there's other issues that come with it. It's a social decline. Or, I could be in a committed relationship with the same woman, grow together. Research was done in regards to men who have one night stands. Yeah? And men who come back to the same woman every night. Who do you think is more happier? It depends if the woman's low though. Huh? If the woman's low, of course it's going to be the one. If you're, if you're dealing with women that are not low... No, no, no. Keep it simple. Okay, okay, My question is... One woman or thing? One woman. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, you're living a less fulfilled life. Do you know what I mean? I, could, I don't want to long at this convo, but I've had plenty of conversations with people who followed their desires, didn't make them happy. Now they want to come back and follow the monophistic, the true religion, the complete way of life that Islam brings to it. Does that make sense? But we have a more detailed convo. You want to ask a question? I'm just, I just, like, basically, I'm just going to say that like, there's too many temptations. No, 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 not even that. No, not even that conversation. Um, we was talking about what was he talking about? Theology. He was talking about. There was another question before this topic came up. About prophets. Yeah, about prophets and 
you know what I mean? Because the moral of the story is, yeah, you believe in one God. Yes. Does Islam, does Christianity teach one God? Yeah. Does Christianity teach uh, Jesus Christ, God or sent by God? Is Jesus Christ God or is he sent by God? Sent by God. Sent by God. Then you're not a Christian. How? Then you don't believe in Trinity. Wait, wait, let me not say on camera that basically that I don't believe, but I'll get what you're saying. Trinity, there is no. Nobody cares, you're going to be blurred out, my bro. Okay, Does that cool. make sense? And how many people do you know that not sympathetic towards Islam is going to be watching this channel? Yeah, true, true. You have some sympathy, your. A healthy interest or curiosity, let's just call it. Hence, you watch these channels. Yeah, because I like, I like, People I like, you yeah. know, your family members ain't gonna watch this. So you're, you're gonna be anonymous, my bro. And yeah, I, I, maybe by I the permission of Allah, inshallah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Allah will protect you. I don't, I don't. Yeah? yeah? I can see where that comes. There's a bit of a. Yeah, contradiction in it. Does that make sense? Because yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah? So I'm saying. You don't believe in Trinity. The Bible doesn't teach Trinity. Jesus Christ never said, I am God or worship me. So, and that's basically what Trinity means. Trinity means the Father is equally God with the Son. The Son is equally God with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is equally God with the Father. They're not three gods, but the one God, the all one. Yeah? And I'm saying to you, that don't make sense. I'm saying Jesus didn't teach this. I'm saying to you, that's not money theism. Yeah? I'm saying what you believe in your heart is true. There's only one God. God sent prophets and messengers, and the prophet Jesus is a messenger sent by God. Now, huh? How was the prophet? How was Jesus born? The, 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 do you not believe in that Gabriel, angel Gabriel came to him? Shall I tell you something? We believe chapter 19 of the Quran is named after Mother Mary. Yeah? Peace be upon her. Yeah? We believe in the virgin birth. We believe that, and it's written here as well, that um, God sent the angel Gabriel yeah, with the word which is the commandment of Jesus Christ to be born miraculously without male intervention so that's what we believe my bro we don't believe like God um, the angel Gabriel came on over Mary and what the Bible says and so on and so forth yeah so you don't believe that he came and rose after six days no we believe he came and we believe he's been raised up alive yeah so do you believe in like the seven but we don't believe Jesus Christ died on the cross okay how did that He's not dead. He's not dead. He was raised up alive. So the person who was on the cross, it was that's how it appeared to them. The people, it, that's what they perceived it. But again, that's not over here. You know, that the moral of the story is Jesus Christ was raised up alive. One of the signs of judgment day is he'll return, he'll fight the Antichrist. He'll kill the Antichrist, he'll break the crosses, he'll kill the swine and humanity will live in peace. He will declare that, look, I only worship God. Uh, he, will, he will separate himself from Christianity, Christians. But why is, why is there Antichrist if he's the Christ? How can it be Antichrist? How can it be something anti to him if he's I'm not the Christ? I'm limited by the English language. Yeah. Does it make sense? I can say Dijal. Yeah. And Jesus Dijal. is Esau. Yeah. Dijal. Yeah. Now, when I say Dijal, what does that mean to you? Yeah? So it's basically um, something that will come back close to the end of times who do these things, bring the dead back to life. Someone will be split in half, he'll bring it back to life and he'll bring people to disbelief who have one eye. Yeah? The believers will see Kafir written on his forehead. Does that make sense? But other people won't see this. But again, I don't want to go too much into this, but it's like I just use the word Antichrist because you will know what that means. Yeah? I don't even know what Antichrist means. You know what I mean? Like the devil, like anti -God. Like yeah. Anti yeah, that goes against. Yeah. So it's not even anti Christ, it's anti God. Yeah. 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 So thank you for correcting me. Yeah. Now, because you've said that and you've educated me, yeah. I won't even use anti Christ now. Because I didn't realize 
how loaded that word is and the connotations to it. So thank you very much. Um, okay. Any other questions, my bro? No, 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 not enough. <laughs> Grab him. Yeah. He's he definitely been full provoking. Definitely, definitely. What's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who's guaranteed paradise? Now, my hedonistic lifestyle. Let's be honest. Okay. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. The fact of the matter is. It's better for you to leave this conversation as someone who believes in, testifies to the belief in your heart, is guaranteed paradise and lives a sinful hedonistic lifestyle. Then to go back to hedonistic lifestyle. I'm saying that I don't even want to talk to you about changing your lifestyle. I want you to testify to the belief you have, get guaranteed paradise, proactively learn. Yeah, I'm definitely going to look into that. I'm Proactively yeah. Um, yeah, I'm look into get, that. see the beauties of Islam. Yes, Islam is based that. on five pillars. Yeah. You've seen your manager. Yeah. Is he not more organized, more focused? Yes. Like, yes. Everything why? Serious. He prays five times a day. Yes. Does it make sense? Yeah. His life's in order. Yeah. I'm saying the way your body needs food, yeah. your soul needs food. Yeah. And your hedonistic lifestyle will Inshallah, by the permission of Allah, disappear once you bring Islam into your life. Baby steps. You read Quran. Yeah? You pray five times a day. Not even five times a day. Whatever you can do. There was a man, a new Muslim, a convert, a reaver, came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, I can't pray five times a day, man. Can't do it. Just can't do it. Can you make an exception for me, like? Lucid translation. Hook me up, man. Yeah. Hook me up. <laughs> Salam, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get in so much trouble because oh. these men are gonna be like, oh, I'm being disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not you, me. Um, Salam, So he's saying to the messenger of God, like, look, Allah, um, oh, me Rasulullah, messenger of God, like, give me a respite. Like, can I not pray less? Yeah. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, from his beloved lips said, Yeah, pray, I can't remember if it's two or three. Reduced it. And the companions, they were shocked. Because at the end of the day, when you're new to something, you're given that respite. I can't pray less. Man like me has to maintain five times a day. Does that make sense? Man like me is on another level, alhamdulillah, trying to go to the mosque as well. Do you know what I mean? Five times a day? Yeah. That's, that's brother, that's like, what's, how can I say man, that's another level my bro, does it make sense? You have to be, um, what's it called, pro, pro level my bro, does it make sense? But the fact of the matter is, few minutes a day in your house is sufficient. Few minutes, like, like here, bang it out, some brothers just praying, like now, we're waiting for Salah, bang, you're going to see us just praying there. One of the blessings that came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, is the entire land, the entire world has been a place where you can pray. Does that make sense? It's time to pray. Put your prayer mat, pray, bang. Does that make sense? Easy, simple. So, I'm saying that when you do that, the second pillar of Islam, um, this regretful, shameful behavior, these hedonistic things would decrease and disappear. And you will live a more happier, productive life. Because even yourself, yeah. At the moment, you don't seem like someone who's enjoying the hedonistic lifestyle. You're like, brother, I need to go. Man's got some hedonistic stuff to be doing, yeah? You're not even saying that. You're like, yeah. I am kind of, but still, I hear what you're saying, definitely, yes. Once, um, Islam's going to give you alternatives. Yeah. We're going to give you something better. Yeah. Does that make sense? I'm going to give you, like, rather than doing these things the way, just following your desires, I'm saying, like, do it in the halal, permissible way. We're going to get you married, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Four wives, my bro. Yeah? Yeah, four wives. Yeah? So... Um, <laughs> where do I sign? Ashhadu <laughs> Allah, ilaha illallah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasuluh. So... Um, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, so yeah, the second pillar the, is praying five times a day. The third pillar is 
um, giving 2.5% of your annual wealth. 